Is he holding back and playing it cool or is he actually emotionally unavailable? Perhaps he said he wants you but he doesn't want a relationship with you or anything serious. This kind of uncertainty and ambivalence is natural in the early stages of dating but at what point is he actually emotionally unavailable and it's time for you to move on so you don't waste any more of your time. Today I'm going to dive into 12 definite signs that if there's even one of these he is emotionally unavailable and it is time for you to move on and stick around to the end because I'm going to give you four internal signs that if you feel these within you there is a high chance that he's emotionally unavailable too and don't worry we are going to cover what to do if you yourself notice these signs are actually occurring in your behavior and if you're new here welcome my name is Amy and I help women who are sick of falling for unavailable men to break the cycle of toxic romantic relationships by healing their core wounds so they can be happy alone till they find a healthy match and if you'd like more content on this topic please do click the subscribe button hit the bell notification so you get notified when I post new lessons every week before we begin heal your heart school is open for enrollment so if you'd like to know more about how to work with me stick around to the end of this lesson so sign number one is that he has a history of short-term relationships he has a history of leapfrogging from relationship to relationship and doesn't seem to have been able to form a long-term connection for more than say two or three years with a relationship and if it was long term it was on and off right they kept breaking up getting together breaking up getting getting together so there's no committed relationship history um, or there's very little commitment in his actual history. The second sign is that you notice he's giving minimum effort. Now this might not occur at the very beginning of a relationship with or a dating or an emotionally available man. Um, often there's a lot of love being given at the beginning. It can feel a little bit like love bombing, like it's a little bit too inappropriate for such early stages. But then after a couple of months or six months, he seems to get comfortable and that kind of sends his default back to this minimum effort so um, when when he's comfortable he just doesn't go above and beyond to um, do things for you or to meet your needs he's not enthusiastic about doing things together or he's not enthusiastic about actually organizing things and being proactive and just seems to be comfortable scraping by giving breadcrumbs and scraps and you yourself are kind of in a pattern where you're accepting that so he doesn't actually need to step up anymore sign number three and this is a big one that's that his actions and words are not aligned so what he says about himself and what he does doesn't match what he actually does so it's really important to watch the actions of a person when you're dating to see whether they align with what he's telling you and often if this person's emotionally unavailable their words can be really confusing so they say something but you don't really understand it like it doesn't make a lot of sense for me I've experienced it where it feels like they're speaking a different language and I'm like do I not have a degree in English and history? Like what's going on with me that I don't understand this kind of communication? And they might appear emotionally literate, like they tell you all these things and appear to be really self-aware um, and really emotionally intelligent. But at the end of the day, you are confused about where they stand, what they're doing, whether they're over their ex, how they feel about you, and you actually suspect that he might be telling some white lies to you because he said one thing earlier on and now he's saying something different and when you ask him about it he gives you this kind of really confusing answer and you are just never left feeling clear about anything sign number four is that he gets defensive often it's natural to get a little bit defensive sometimes when we're on the back foot but if defensiveness is in his nature when you do bring up things and when there's any kind of conflict uh, this is a high sign that he's very protective of himself and he he is unavailable emotionally to connect with you so he doesn't take feedback well he's very protective about him and himself and his world and his thoughts and his feelings and yeah he kind of tends to defer to defensiveness and when there is an issue between the two of you you own your part right you are into self-development you're on this channel but he never owns his own part right he never takes responsibility for his 50% of what happened and he's always this kind of victim um, you know it's always done to him it's never something that he's done that he's made a mistake and is fully apologizing for or acknowledging at least that yeah I, I screwed up there there's always this kind of like deflection and never really acknowledging his own part in it
Sign number five is that there is a lot of hot and then cold behavior with him. So he comes on hot when he needs to, to keep you on a hook, particularly if you kind of like pull back, he'll do what he can to get you back. Um, but then when you're actually together, you kind of feel like you're at arm's length, right? His behavior is kind of inconsistent and you can't really get that close to him. And it's a bit of a roller coaster. It feels really confusing, right? And there's a level of ambivalence and uncertainty about both you and what this is. Uh, and he can never really seem to be clear about how he's feeling, um, you know, in terms of his intentions about you and what's going on between the two of you for the future. Sign number six is that he's just not present right there's limited availability he doesn't seem to show a lot of interest about being present with you enough of the time that you would like he doesn't always respond to text messages and physically like he's always running late or he's hard to pin down he's hard to hard to plan things with he might be running five hours late for something or he'll just cancel on plans there's no respect for your time or your planning and things just feel really uncertain about your ability to be able to make plans with him sign number seven is that he has limited compassion for you like it seems like sometimes he really lacks compassion when you've got something going on you're upset about something you know it might be work related or anything related and you just don't feel you can rely on him for emotional support and that's because he has difficulty with his own emotional literacy he doesn't know how to show compassion within himself and so he can't give that to others around him so he might console you but there's this kind of like undercurrent where you're aware he thinks you're either too needy or too much or you know there's so much drama around you when you're just actually a normal human being having a normal human emotional experience sign number eight is that love from him feels conditional or affection or interest feels conditional from him right so it's dependent on you doing certain things being a certain way saying certain things right for him to feel that connection with you and he doesn't love you just as you are so you don't actually feel that you can just be yourself and be loved for it so there's this kind of feeling that you might be like a trophy girlfriend or a trophy wife if you're married um, to show off you know to people around uh, on the outside but behind closed doors it's a different story right that physical affection is conditional there's this rigidity in it and you just don't feel like there's this natural organic kind of love connection between the two of you Sign number nine, and this is a really concerning and big red flag, is that there is controlling behavior. And obviously external controlling behavior is like telling you what you can and can't wear, who you can and can't hang out with, you know, those kinds of like external conditions that if you do that, then I'm going to be really upset. But then there's this more coercive controlling behavior as well, where there are kind of subtle little um, signs that if you choose to do that, that's cool. But you know, that means I'm going to kind of withdraw my love, right? That's the really subtle underlying current that there's again, this kind of conditional nature to his love and that he doesn't approve of certain things you do or say or who you hang out with and there might be games that's played here right there's like silent treatment that you're given if you do go out and choose to do something that means that he's unhappy and you know there's an elephant in the room clearly because he's responding in that way and it kind of feels like you know everything kind of has to happen his way in order to keep things okay uh, and you know your world kind of starts to rotate around him because he's got all these kind of controlling needs that he has sign number 10 is that he defers to a lot of numbing behavior now we all do this again this is quite a normal thing we like to check out watch some netflix you know go into fantasy land a little bit but if this is a really common pattern that he does every day for hours where there's a lot of numbing like watching tv video games you know just always binge watching the same television series or anything more significantly serious like drinking or any other kind of addictions drugs sex porn all of those things that's a really clear sign to you that he doesn't know how to deal with his emotional world and it's just a tendency to shut it down and numb it and that means he's just not going to be available emotionally to make a strong close intimate connection with you 
Sign seven is that there's a lack of intimacy in your relationship and in your kind of container. And this is where they avoid intimacy in any real way, right? There might be superficial intimacy, like little, you know, affection and kisses. And there might be bursts of that feeling where you, you really feel like he really loves you. But, you know, you don't actually feel like it's consistent. Um, and you don't actually feel that there is anything more deep that's growing. So if there's, um, you know, physical intimacy, it's really kind of just about getting down to the act uh, rather than you know a lot of like tenderness and caressing and real like kind of emotional vulnerability around it so in terms of emotional intimacy here too a lot of the conversation just kind of revolves around them what they think their past what they believe um, and you don't actually feel like they've gotten a chance to really know the true you they haven't uh kind of facilitated the space to get to know you more deeply and you might have been together for just weeks or months or years and the connection hasn't developed and hasn't grown emotionally there isn't this emotional intimacy there number 12 and this is probably the biggest sign and that is a fear of commitment and I want to caveat this with the fact that you know emotional unavailability can be passing it can be temporary if this person just got out of a relationship or a marriage or something significant and they're just not available to go into something long-term and serious with you they aren't going to be able to commit that doesn't mean that they're you know, chronically emotionally unavailable, but it means that at this moment in time, they're not emotionally available to connect with you. No one is worth waiting around for because your years and energy and your life are absolutely valuable to you. So if there's a fear of commitment there, either it's to do with where he's just come from, or you suspect that there's kind of like this ongoing inability to commit because of sign number one, where he's just got a history of really short term relationships, that is a really strong sign he's emotionally unavailable. So you might be trying to like put a label on it and try and get clear on what's going on and you're doing your best with healthy communication, but he's just really non-committal. He doesn't want to put a label on it. He wants to go slow, take it organically, all of those kinds of words, but you are left feeling confused, right? Um, you don't know where you stand and you kind of feel like you want to label it as a situationship as a result. Now, it's one thing to have all these external signs, but if you spent time on my channel, you know that I really talk about internal patterns and what's going on internally within us and using our internal signals to really have healthy, intimate, close relationships and they start within us. So if you notice these four signs are going on within you, there is a high chance the person you are with is emotionally unavailable. So sign number one is that inside you actually feel really alone when you're with him. So when you're together, it's like he's hiding parts of himself to you, like you might have a whole other world that you just aren't being let into and you don't feel like you're getting all of him when you're together. Like, yeah, there's that other world going on. And so when you're with him, it's kind of like you only get a sliver of him and it really makes you feel alone because there's so many other ways you'd like to connect with him, but he's just not available to do that. Sign number two is that you feel unclear about what this is. You've tried to define the relationship, um, but things feel really hazy, unclear. Like if you were to tell someone else about it, you'd sort of say, well, this really is just a situationship, um, right? And things do feel rocky. They feel like the relationship's dependent on your ability to appease him, to stop conflict from happening. Um, and that's the kind of the dynamic that you're in. Sign number three is that you can't be yourself. This is really big. If you can't relax into your happy, quirky, weird, you know, sometimes gross self in front of him uh, and can't be loved in that way, that is a huge sign he's emotionally unavailable because there's some dynamic going on where he's rejecting parts of you and you've kind of like maybe subconsciously learnt to morph and chameleon yourself into be what he wants you to be. And that's one of the signs from earlier on. Um, and you're just actually doing this to keep the peace, to keep the connection in, to feel loved. And if you do show that kind of quirky, extravagant side of you, he kind of like withdraws some love or attention or judges you for it. And you just kind of feel like there's not a whole lot of acceptance about all the different parts of who you are. You feel really constricted in that and restricted in who you can express yourself to be. And, you know, if you are a different person to your friends than you are to this, this person, that is a huge sign that there is emotional unavailability going on and that you're kind of locked in this at the moment. Sign number four is that you avoid conflict because he can't handle it, doesn't want to deal with the drama. You try and healthily discuss it, bring it up in a really 
you know, calm, open, uh, adult way, but at any sign of any kind of, you know, need for him to take responsibility for something he did that needs to be shifted or changed or compromised on, or at least just talked about, he will deflect that onto you. And as a result, resentment builds up in you because nothing growing and changing. There's no life being breathed into the relationship because you can't go through those natural ebbs and flows of a little bit of conflict and then resolution where you come back together and repair. Now, if you have gone through these signs and been like, well, this person I'm with is obviously emotional and available, and I do tend to keep attracting these types of people, this is a, as much a you problem as it is a them problem because there's something within you that's trying to forge a relationship in an unreciprocal dynamic. And that's often a sign that you yourself have a blueprint that's used to unavailable love and that there may be some aspects of you yourself that is emotionally unavailable. You might have even looked at some of those signs and be like, well, actually, I've done that in the past. So am I emotionally unavailable or not? So I've created an entire video for you to watch here for you to go through and really do a stock take and analysis on what's going on within you and what to do to start healing it so you can be emotionally available and have healthy, uh, beautiful connections and certainly call them into your life and stop wasting time with these emotionally unavailable ambivalent situations. And if you would like to know more about the complete three-step process that I teach my clients in Heal Your Heart School to go through to heal your core wounds so that you can be free and happy to be yourself and on your own. And it's not a problem about what's going on in your relationship, your life. You're happy to wait until someone healthy comes along. I'm hosting a masterclass on the proven three steps to self-love after a toxic relationship ends. You can click the link below and join me in the webinar there. I also have a Facebook group. I often go live in there. I'd love to interact with you one-on-one. -on -one. And if you found this video helpful, please comment below what was interesting, what's going on in your world at the moment. I will be in the comments interacting with you. And again, if you did like this video, click the like button because that will help this video out in the algorithm. And for now, here are some next step videos for you to watch so you can move one step closer to clearing your abandonment wounds, your attachment wounds so that you can be happy alone and attract a naturally healthy and intimate relationship. And for now, I will see you in the next video.